All right, I'm finally doing it. The Weapon Triangle in Fire Emblem. This is easily one of the most frequently asked questions on my channel. A lot of people are wondering about it, you know, how realistic is the Weapon Triangle or how much sense does it make logically, and I've seen plenty of debates about that. Okay, so the Weapon Triangle is Sword Beats Axe, Lance Beats Sword, Axe Beats Lance. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to ignore magic and the newer triangle that also includes hidden weapons, bows, and tomes. Alright, so swords, axes, lances. Uh, first off, what is a lance? Well, it can be anything from a simple spear that's just used on horseback up to very specialized jousting lances. And if you look at antiquity and the early Middle Ages, there is really no clear distinction. Sometimes a lance is called a heavy spear, but a spear can simply be picked up and used on horseback as opposed to on foot, and there's a lot of overlap. So in this video I'm mainly going to call them spears because it's more inclusive, because a lance would just be on horseback, a spear can be used on foot as well. And before we start, let's acknowledge one fundamental fact of armed combat. Skill, experience, and physical fitness are the most crucial aspects. It's much more important than which weapon somebody's using, especially when you're comparing the same weapon type, you know, the usual katana versus longsword, etc. Particular swords, in this case, user is what really matters. The inherent differences and pros and cons aren't as substantial. However, not all weapons are equal, obviously. So certain ones have particular advantages over others. Uh, one of the most extreme examples would be dagger versus spear. Now, the 14th century knight and fencing master Fiore de Liberi in his Flower of Battle actually shows techniques uh, used with a dagger against a spear, but basically that's just him showing off how skilled he is, because that is a major disadvantage. Attack me one by one as you wish. None of you will escape as I destroy each of you with this turn of my dagger. Yeah, pure humility right here. Jokes aside, this ties in with what I said earlier about skill and experience being extremely important but let's not forget just how much of a disadvantage that is. Anyway, so if we're talking sword versus axe, question is, what kind? You know, single-handed, two-handed, is there a shield involved? So these would all be quite substantial differences. Um, for example, if you fight sword and shield versus axe and shield, the inherent pros and cons of the sword and the shield are very much evened out by the shield. So that's much more even than just single-handed sword versus single-handed axe. And two-handed axe versus single-handed axe, I mean, something like this, for example, uh, I would bet on the axe. This is quite a long axe. This is almost a pole arm, And this, for that matter, is an axe, too. Um, if you had to fight these with a relatively short sword, Two-handed sword versus two-handed axe, quite a bit different. So for the sake of a consistent argument, I'm going to compare a one-handed sword to a one-handed axe, and I'm going to assume that the axe is shorter than the sword. It's not always the case, but again, for the sake of argument, let's just assume that. So there are a few obvious things that people have pointed out in these discussions I'm not going to go into too much, now, one, of course, is if the sword is longer, it's got the reach advantage, and it's definitely got the advantage in agility. You know, because of how it's balanced, a, an axe is essentially an upside-down sword in terms of balance, and it moves a lot less quickly and nimbly than a sword blade does. Depends a lot on what kind of sword a much larger sword with a thicker blade may actually be more sluggish than a fairly light axe like this, but in general 
the sword would be easier to maneuver, wouldn't tire you as much, and you could more easily do things like feints and change direction. And of course you've got thrusts. Most axes don't really have that option, or at least not very effective. Something like this, yes, could thrust, but not as effectively as a sword. And a sword thrust can be very quick, of course, as well. So the sword wielder has a speed and more refined technique at their disposal. With a sword blade, especially a double-edged one, you can strike from some pretty tricky angles that would be very difficult to do with an axe. Also, with an axe, the hand is even more exposed than with a sword, even if it just has a simple cross guard. Later swords, of course, have more elaborate hand protection. They have a knuckle bow, some have uh, baskets and all of that. But even the simplest kind of guard offers you more protection than an axe handle. So if a sword strikes the axe handle and slides down, there is nothing really to protect the hand. The hand can also be targeted directly, which it can with a sword as well, but it's just more exposed in case of the axe. Speaking of striking the handle, it's arguably harder to break a well-made sword than it is to break a well-made axe. Now, of course you can break a sword. Swords have broken in battle in historical times, and they still can, but it is just more difficult because the sword, if it is well-tempered, has a flex. You, know, you can see right here, it can flex and spring back to its shape without breaking, or in case of earlier iron swords, they will bend rather than break. Now cutting into or even through an axe handle would be very difficult if it is well made of hardwood, now, especially if it's a lighter one-handed sword. Now you can cut chips out of it, you can damage it over time, but even if you were to fix this in a vise or stick it in the ground or whatever, it would be very difficult to cut through it in one swing, if not impossible. You could maybe cut halfway into it, maybe a bit, a bit further, but considering that if an opponent holds it in their hand, it's gonna have some give. For one, the opponent is gonna move around, and even if they aren't, then just striking something, you know, the, the hand is always have, going to have some give, and all of that. So it would be difficult, but it would at least be possible, especially with multiple strikes. You could start to damage the axe, and eventually, if the axe hits something else, it will break, for sure, more easily than the sword, with the exception that some axes have reinforced handles. Uh, in this case here, I've got some rawhide on it. That definitely helps make it more resilient to damage. There are some axes that have langets going down there. It's more common with pole axes, but if you have any kind of reinforcement there, especially if it's metal, then that would of course make it much more difficult to damage it. So you can see there are a lot of different factors to consider, but overall I would agree that a one-handed sword versus a one-handed axe has a potential advantage. Two-handed axe versus two-handed sword might be more equal. This can be argued either way. All right, let's move on to lance versus sword. And Naginatas are also classified as lances in the game. And it could be a variety of different spears and possibly pole arms. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about that later. So single-handed sword against spear is at a massive disadvantage. Uh, the, the lance or spear would have much superior reach. It's got very quick and deceptive thrusts that are very difficult to defend against. It's got superior leverage. It's got an extremely powerful impact, uh, especially from horseback um, with a couch lance in particular. That is quite a jarring impact and will do a lot of damage, all of that. So this is pretty obvious. Now, the two-handed sword has a much better chance against a spear or pole arm than a one-handed one. So defeating a spear user with a sword is possible, but I would argue it requires more skill to defeat a spear with a sword than vice versa. Hence, advantage goes to the spear or lance. Axe versus lance is one that people often shrug off as, well, it's for gameplay balance. And of course it is. You know, if you come up with this, these rules of what beats what, you're gonna be left with a combination where you just have to say, well, this beats that because that's the only other combination left. And um, fair enough, 
But uh, if we want to argue which is better, so once again, it depends a whole lot on what kind of axe. In this case, if you have a single-handed axe against a spear, that's much, much harder than if you have a fairly long, massive axe to use. But one thing that a lot of axes can do is hook and wrench. So it can control the opponent's weapon that way, which is useful because the spear lance polearm is quite difficult to defend against. So if you have an extra chance, even if it's with a single-handed axe, if you have a chance to hook it, wrench it aside, and come in or maybe draw it in and grab it with your other hand, then you can move in and strike with the axe. Because as soon as you get past the dangerous point of the, the spear or lance, now you can strike with the butt end of a spear, but it's of course not as effective as using the point. And I would argue that once the axe user gets into grappling distance, they have the upper hand, and more so than a sword. Now a sword can very well be used in grappling distance. It can be used with the half-sorting technique and in a variety of other ways. But I would argue that the axe is even more effective than a sword at close range because you can do a wide variety of things with it. You can choke up and down on the handle. You can, you can even punch with the, the axe head depending on the design. You can really shorten the reach and, and this, even if you choke up that far because of the mass of the axe head, this is still going to be a pretty effective uh, chop and you can you can also hook limbs with it you can uh, thrust or strike with the handle there there's a wide variety of things you can do with either a one or a two-handed axe now the two-handed axe would be at more of a disadvantage at grappling distance but it would be better at you know, defending with at further distance you can also make the point that an axe is more effective at damaging a uh, spear so if you, if you manage to strike the spear shaft with an axe blade, it's going to do quite a bit more damage than the sword. An axe is always going to strike harder and it will cut deeper into the sword, into the sword, into the spear shaft and uh, possibly also break the handle. Now, it is harder to hit it accurately, of course, because with a sword you have about this much effective blade length to cut with further down it's just not a good cut anymore so it's much easier to hit with this as opposed to the smaller surface of the, the edge on an axe let alone this this would be pretty difficult to actually hit accurately with but if you do then yeah you can do a whole lot more damage one thing i found a little confusing is minerva's weapon in fire emblem shadow dragon and heroes in the artwork, she's shown with a weapon that looks different than what she has in the game. In the game, she has either a lance or an axe, and the axe looks a lot different from this. So the artwork, what is this? Is this, it's, it's a polearm. I mean, this may as well be a fantasy halberd. So what is this? Is this a lance? Is this an axe? If this classifies as an axe, then you can basically get the advantages of a lance in an axe with axe functionality as well. So a halberd arguably could be both an axe and a spear or lance and a sword for that matter. So just something to consider. All right, that's all I've got for now. If you like the video, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Or maybe you want to buy some razor blades. This also helps out the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks. Thank you.